And it's our honor and a privilege to have Miss Cheryl Sumpter, Divine Three, here today. So you make them welcome to Leatherwood Baptist Church. Yeah. Appreciate everybody being here this morning. Amen. In the house of the Lord. Y'all come on and sing for us. They're going to sing a couple, and then we'll do another congregation here in just a minute. Put your hands together.
Listen, we got up yesterday morning. We was going to go riding some places up in the mountains. And Brother Ken said, why don't we get Waffle House? Why don't we just get Waffle House? Well, the problem is it takes a whole lot longer to get ready than what you expect. And so we, we, I, we called him. We said, Brother Ken, we can't go to Waffle House. We can't do it. We, gotta, we, we are in a hurry. And uh, we didn't realize how far the drive really was. And so I called, I called Brother Ken. I said, what do you want for breakfast? And he said, we don't, we don't have time. I said, just tell me what you want for breakfast. He said, get me a sauce of biscuit. Alex, give me a, give me a, give me a bacon biscuit. I'm going to tell you something. I called Cheryl's Grill. You ever heard of this place up in Turnerville? I knew we was going right by that gas station. I called Cheryl's Grill. And I said, I need four bacon. She said, just text it to me. Just text it to me. We're going to have it ready for you. I'm talking heaven sent biscuits yesterday morning. You saved my life. You saved, my, you saved his life. Because he was starting to get hangry. You know there's a difference between hungry and hangry? You don't want to be around me or anybody if you're hangry. Yeah, amen right there? Y'all know what I'm talking about. But praise God, the biscuits were wonderful, and we're here this morning. Amen? There's one thing that you should never say when you get something like a biscuit from a place that you're around the person. You never should say, I'm as good as a hair in a biscuit or something. Oh, like that. Lord. He said, he said that this morning. I said, oh, my gosh, did you find a hair in a biscuit? <laughs> Scare me to death. She said, how you doing this morning? I said, I'm hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. <laughs> I mean, it is Baldwin, you know. It's Banks County. God help us, all right? This is not Atlanta, all right? Like a hair and a... And those things don't go nowhere. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about.
I'm going to tell you something this morning. He's real. Yes, he is. He's real. Yes, he is. And, I, and I almost said sing that again, but Miss Cheryl, she felt it just about as much as I did. Has he ever called your name? Yes. I'm talking, has he ever called your name? Yes. I'm talking, has he called your name? I've had mom call my name. I've yes. had dad call my name. I've had some of my best friends call my name. But I've never got over that night. When I tried to find peace and I tried to find comfort and I tried to find God doing something and he called my name. Right. But I couldn't sleep at night. Brother Kim, when he called my name, I'm glad I came. Thank you. And I found myself at the foot of the Nazarene at an old rugged cross. Yep. And I cried out. I said, Lord, I'm undone. I'm unworthy. And I need you to save me. And just like Scotty got through singing, what a, what a difference it made. Oh, yes. oh, what a difference. You know, the reason he had to call Lazarus' his name, because if he had just said, come forth, everybody in that cemetery would have got up and came out. That's right. Personally. And I'm going to tell you something. The people that were there that day, they said, Lord, he's, he stinks. That's probably Baptist. He stinks. But aren't you glad for those times in your life when God Almighty will raise a stink in your life yes. to get him, get your attention? Right. He knows how to do it. He knows how to get you all the way to the bottom of the barrel when there is no hope, when there is no help. Yep. You can't call Wells Fargo, Bank of America, you can't help you. I mean, you can't call your brother, you can't call your sister, you can't call your mom, your dad, you can't call your kids. And I'm telling you, it's in those moments where you're either going to turn to God or you're going to turn to Satan. Yep. There, 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 is, there is no in-between on this thing, y'all. I said this last Sunday. I said, if your salvation isn't good enough to get you to the house of God on Sunday morning, do you really think it's going to be good enough to get you into the pearly gates yes. come resurrection morning? Right. Right. I'm, gonna tell you, I'm, I'm not just saved on Sunday. I'm saved on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm telling you, he made a difference yes, in my life. There were things that I had in my life I had to get rid of immediately. And it wasn't and it wasn't hard. It wasn't hard. No. The Holy Ghost moved in and I felt uncomfortable with some people I was hanging out with. And I said, Lord, how am I, I going to break fellowship with these guys? These bunch of God deniers. He said, just tell them about me. They'll dump you. <laughs> yes, they'll dump you. That's right. I just told him, Brother Alex, I said, this is what God did for me. I ain't heard from him since. Did the same, brother. Some good friends yeah, man. Right there. I'm gonna tell you something. When you when you when you get to that place where nothing else works and it's like that door shut and you're just beating your head against the wall and it feels like your marriage is on the cliffs, your kids are. I mean, I'm telling you, there's a point in a time in every man's life, every woman's life, where you want to turn to God. You have to turn to Him because He's the only one that can fix it. I don't know why we've gotten into the day and age we're in right now. I mean, up is down. Backwards is really forwards. Good is evil. And evil's good. A few months ago, if I'd have walked into a bank with a mask on, they would have they would have hit that silent emergency button underneath the little thing. And they'd have, they'd have, they'd have took me out of there. Look up in here. If I walk in there now without one, they'll tackle me in the floor and put an IV in my arm. Bro Scotty, I'm talking a few years ago, I was socially distancing myself from my mother-in-law. And it wasn't a good thing. Now that I do it, I'm a hero. Right? So come on. Y'all help me this morning. Yeah, man. Up's down, down's up. Right. Forward's backwards, left is right, right is left. Good's evil, evil's good. That's that's the day and hour we're living in. Hey. Listen. There are churches right now in this country that cannot do what we're doing, especially in California, Baltimore, Maryland. I've got pastor friends of mine that want to come to church and meet and worship, but the county officials said it's bad for their health. It's amazing coronavirus don't go to any riots. Nope. You know what I found out? It only goes to church. <laughs> I think the sucker needs to get saved. Amen? Yeah, that's, only, that's the only place he goes is the house of the Lord. You can't get it at Walmart. You can't get it off an Amazon package or off money. Somebody called me the other day and they said, oh, we don't take cash. It may have Corona on it. And I said, really? I said, well, you just send all the dirty cash my way and I'll clean it for you. Amen? <laughs> Free of charge. 
I've got me a washing machine from Kenmore. That thing is good. And if I get too much cash, my neighbor will help me wash it. <laughs> Say amen right there. So let's get rid of all the coins and let's go to digital cash. We're going we're gonna to get rid of that dirty cash. We'll go to digital cash. And then, and then what we'll do is we'll put, a, we'll put a mark in your hand or in your forehead. That way, hey, if you've got that mark, that way you can buy and sell. You know what I think is a shame and a disgrace? When the United States Marine officer, the, the Navy SEAL officer, got kicked off a Delta flight because he refused to put on a mask on the Delta flight. He refused to put it. The guy put a bullet between Osama bin Laden's eyes and they escorted him off the flight. I said, why didn't they roll out the red carpet for that guy? Right. Why didn't they roll out the red carpet? I thought we lived in a free society. You can do whatever you want to. Right? We're living in some weird days. In the times, brother. Boy, it's dangerous to go to church. But you need to go home, shut the door, and go out. Actually, what we're doing this morning is illegal. I posted a video for this church. I haven't saw the Facebook commercial. Anybody saw that Facebook commercial? You would not believe the hate mail. You're killing people. You're spreading coronavirus. You're killing people. You're spreading coronavirus. But they ain't shut down Walmart. There's an Amazon facility next door to my store. They ain't shut it down. But I tell you what they have done. They've emptied out the jails. And they've let all the criminals out. And they've went around and started arresting Christians and putting pastors in jail. God help us. Yes, amen. Paul Paul said that day would come. And I, you know what, Sure, I didn't believe him. I thought he was crazy. I said, never in America would they shut the doors of the church. But y'all, it's here. It's here. And I'm going to tell you how close we are to the rapture of the church. Revelation chapter number 4. John said, I looked and there was a door open. This is Revelation 4. John said, I looked and there was a door open in heaven and a voice which said, come up hither. John said, I was caught up in the spirit. And he said, I went up hither. And there's no more mention of the church until Revelation 19. You know what happens in Revelation 19? That blood wash crowd comes back and we on white horses. Mm -hmm. You say, I don't know how to ride a horse. You will in that glorified body you get, praise God. Amen. Yeah, man. So I don't know how to ride a horse. You go ride a horse. If you're saved, you're getting on. Hey, listen. Heard one preacher say this. We're leaving here like Superman. But we're coming back like the Long Ranger. <laughs> And I'm not looking for an airplane ride, good neighbor. I'm looking for a plane air ride. Yep. Hello. The, the songwriter said, this robe of flesh, I'll drop and rise. To seize the everlasting prize. And shout. Listen yes. now. Amen. While passing through the air. Thank you, Lord. Farewell. Farewell. Sweet eye. A prayer. You know what Peter said? He said, you better make your call an election sure. Because this, listen, this is the only setting, this is the only opportunity that you have to bow your knee before a thrashing holy God and say, Lord, be merciful to me a sinner and save my wretched soul. You try to do that there, there's no grace, there's no love, there's no long suffering, and there's no mercy. It'd be, like a, it'd be like a murderer, Brother James, going before a judge and saying, Judge, I hear you're merciful. I hear you're graceful. I hear you're full of love and full of tender kindness. Judge, can we just forgive me and I go into heaven? What would that judge say? He'd look down there at that murderer and say, Listen, I'm going to uphold the law. I'm going to do what's right. And I'm going to do what's just because that's who I am. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Right. You know what the Bible says? Matthew, I think it's 7. They said that they'd say unto him, Lord, Lord, we've done many wonderful works in your name. And the Lord said, I will profess unto them. I, I never knew you. I never knew you. 
But you better make sure on this side that you know, that you know, that you know. Hey, that you know, that you know, that you know. That your sins have been forgiven. You've accepted Jesus Christ and his blood to cleanse you of all sin. And it, listen, it can't happen on your own. I wait till I get on my deathbed. That way I can still hang out with my buddies. That way I can still live the life I want to live. Listen, no, 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 no. That ain't how it works. It says call on him while he's near. Seek him while he may be found. And I've just got a real good sense of things spiritually, all right? I'm a pretty good discerner that somebody bigger than any of us is in this room right now. Yeah, man. And he's walking up and down these aisles and he's walking in and out of these pews. And it just so happened that he orchestrated this whole day just for somebody here to hear the gospel one more time. You say, what's the gospel? That whosoever, red, yellow, black, white, green, orange, blue, purple, or even red, big sinner, little sinner, big man, little man, strong man, weak man, don't matter who you are, I'm going to tell you something. He's given you that one more opportunity to get things right. Get things right. Because I'm telling you, it wouldn't surprise me if we left this service and we stepped out here and I got in my truck to leave and I looked over at that cemetery and them graves were bursting open. Yeah, man. Yes, Lord. That's the first load. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ, they're over there. They're going to rise first. You say, why is that? They got six more feet to travel than we do. That's it. Amen right there. Amen. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. Then we, which are alive and remain, that's us, shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, comfort one another with these words. Now, when I heard that preach, Miss Cheryl, I didn't find no comfort in it. That scared me. You know how I used to sleep? Like I did praying in the jail one time, watching him pray. You know, this is how I used to sleep with one eye open. I was afraid that the Lord would come while I was in the bed. And my parents would be gone. My sister would be. I knew they'd say but I'd, go, I'd get up in the middle of the night and I'd go look in their bed to make sure they were still there. Right. You say, why would you do something stupid like that? Because it's called Holy Ghost God sent conviction. Right. I battled that thing for about a week or two. I said, Lord, what are, what, what are we going to do, Lord? He said, I, I done did it. He said, Adam, what are you going to do? Last Wednesday night, February 1996. 14 years old. He knew my zip code. He knew my house address. He knew that I was in the first bedroom on the right. Pretty smart. He knew I was on the top bunk, not the bottom bunk. He crawled up the bed with me. He called my name, Brother Alex. Yes, amen. I said, he called my name. Boy, I was shaking, but in fear. I remember I got down, I went in the living room and it just so happened my mom was in there reading her Bible under the lamp. And I got down and I said, Mom, I said, I'm lost. I said, I need to get saved. You know what she said to me? I'll never forget it. She said, you know the Romans road by heart. I don't even know it. She said, Adam, I'm just going to pray with you. You tell God what he needs you to say. And Brother Ken, I cried out and I said, God, save me. That's all I got out. About a 50-pound bag of bricks was lifted off my shoulders. All of a sudden, I had a want to. You say, I want to. Yeah, I wanted to read my Bible. I wanted to go to church. I wanted to hear Southern Gospel. Music. You see me over here shouting. I act just like that when Georgia is tied and it's in the fourth quarter and there's only a second to go and it's up to the field goal kicker. And a Hail Mary won't work. 
Bart, we've tried them too many times. They don't work. It's up to the kicker. And buddy, when he hits them goal posts, what is that crowd? Hundred and what? Hundred ten thousand? They can get in there. Hundred thousand people stand on their feet. They'll shout. They'll scream. They're excited. And then you ask them like the following year, saying, "Now, what was the score of that game?" So I don't remember. I don't remember. But I remember the night he kicked the game a lot of my soul. Yes. He put about two and a half yes. acres down into heaven, a bucket of honey. He kicked over a bucket of honey in my soul, and I ain't been the same since. Yes. Can't get enough of the Bible. Can't get enough of church. Can't get enough of God. Can't get enough of the things of God. I'm telling you something. I love church. I love going to church. I love the Bible. I love to pray. I, I, listen, you where, where's that come from? It ain't my flesh. That's exactly right. My flesh hates all that stuff. It's the Spirit of God that lives within me, the Holy Ghost. What did you say when he calls my name? What a difference. What a difference. What a difference it makes. Lord, they're going to sing. I don't know what they're going to sing. I don't care if you're singing it a hundred times. But I'm going to tell you something. If he's calling your name, you'll know it. You'll know it. He ain't gotta. He, he ain't gotta sit there and get in your face. He'll let you know if he's calling your name. These altars are open this morning, and there's some people here that probably need to just give give God their life. Right. Happy day when I threw everything away that I trusted and believed in, and I threw my trust and my faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. While Linda was up here in Tacoma walking that tightrope. And he asked all those people, WT, Wallinda said, how many believes that I can put a wheelbarrow on here with somebody in it, walk across this gorge, and then turn around and walk back? They said that every hand went up. They all believed he could do it. Then he asked this question. He said, do I have one volunteer to get in the wheelbarrow? He said they couldn't get their hands down quick enough. That's salvation. Everybody believes in God and Jesus and the cross and the resurrection. But jumping in that wheelbarrow, letting go of everything, and throwing yourself yeah. into the hands of somebody else, knowing that he's got full control. Hey, God's not my co-pilot this morning. God's my pilot. I'm sitting in the back of the jet, and I ain't got to wear a seatbelt. He's got all control. He's got all power. He's got all glory. He's God. And besides him, there's none else. Right. Man, I'm excited this morning. Yes, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Bless his holy name. I shouted like this first time I saw my first baby. When Addison was born, boy, I was shouting up down that hospital, thanking God for that baby. You know what he says in heaven when a sinner gets saved? That there's rejoicing. In heaven. Where? In the presence of the angels. Because the, the angels don't even know how to rejoice over somebody getting saved. They've never been saved. But have you ever passed from death unto life? Has your sins been washed up? I'm not talking about repeating a prayer. I'm not talking about repeating a prayer. I can't get my car washed in less than four or five minutes on a good car wash. I'm talking about getting on your knees and saying, God, I'm a sinner and I'm going to hell. I need you to save me. Right. I need you to change me. And the only time that I find that God can do that is John 6, 44. Jesus said, No man can come unto the Father except the Spirit draw him. I think that's the Spirit that's in here this morning. There's a drawing Spirit. Right. These altars are open. He said, Well, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to go to the altar. I'm going to tell you something. You know what's worse than being embarrassed? Embarrassing your flesh. Standing before God Almighty in all of eternity. And there's no place to hide. And he looks at you and says, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. And you die. And you that you die the second. The first death's hard. Bad enough. You die the second death. Right. And you're cut off from God for out all eternity. That's, that, that's a whole lot worse than getting a look embarrassed. I've been in services like this. People couldn't even get to the altar. They'd get in the, they'd get in the aisles. They're under so much conviction. Some of you saints in here that can pray through, why don't you just pray? And God would have His will and His way in this service. 
I didn't have an intention on saying all this, but I think it's, it's just right on time. I said, we're living in some strange days. And I tell you what, I'm looking for that eastern sky to split at any moment. And the Lord stepped out on a cloud and called his children home. And it could be today. It could be today. It could be today. It could be today. It could be before this service is out. God's give you that one more opportunity to get things right with you and God. Some of you need to pray through this morning. Let God do a work. And to find our broken, these words will be spoken. Precious words I may never have had the privilege to hear. Listen to this. Oh, I brought you to this dark valley.
What a wonderful service, powerful service. And I tell you what, that Lazarus song, oh, I love that song, amen. Praise God, that was some good singing. Enjoyed that, amen. Miss Cheryl, appreciate y'all coming. And Divine Three, we love having y'all. All right, let's sing it. All right, let's sing Miss Amanda. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 